All right, guys, a lot to talk about today. Uh, let's go over a couple of things. I'm sure by now you've probably seen dozens of ban list videos from different Yugi tubers that made them. So I'm not going to make this entire video talking about the ban list. Uh, I will go over a couple moves I think were relatively notable, though. First of all, of course, Pot of Avarice coming back to one. I'm definitely excited about it. It should be fun to get a chance to play with that card again. I know OCG's had it at 3, so I don't think it's going to be some kind of drastic move to put it to 1 here. But we obviously do have different metagames, so it remains to be seen whether or not Avarice coming back will actually, you know, be detrimental to the game, or if it'll be fine and they might ultimately move it even further back um, in upcoming formats. Another noteworthy one, Tribe Infecting Virus to 3, which was funny because when we did our banlist prediction video, I mentioned how, you know, this has been something that should happen for a while, but, you know, I didn't see them doing it, and I didn't see, like, it was one that we should really talk about, and yet, here we are. Uh, they put Tribe to 3. Uh, it's gone up a little bit. I don't think the card's going to do anything inherently, uh, at least not right away, which is, you know, kind of disappointing because I wanted to pick up a set of supers, and they're just still a little pricey. But I think for decks like Mermail and, and maybe other future water archetypes, Tribe still is useful. Um, it's searchable in, you know, I don't know if it's searchable in Mermails, but it's searchable in some decks. And overall, I just think it's a neat card, so I'm happy to see that one come back. Uh, they banned Engage. Good riddance. Uh, Harp Horror got banned. Not shocked by that, but again, um, I didn't think that would be the route they'd go. I kind of thought it'd be Dengirsu that got banned, and maybe a slap on the wrist for some of the uh, lower monsters in the deck, even if it was like putting them to two or something. Uh, I don't think Harp Horror will stay at zero. Uh, I think with new mech, uh, with new Orca support coming out, on top of the fact that you know Dengirsu is still allowed to roam freely, uh, we'll see Orcus will continue to remain competitive. Maybe not the best, but it'll definitely be remaining competitive for a while. Um, other than that, uh, we got you know a few other hits. Thunder Dragon Colossus got banned. Happy to see that. And they hit Mirage Stallio for Salamangrates too, which I wasn't expecting, but you know here we are. So overall, I think they did a pretty solid job with this list. Deep Sea Diva to 2 was one of the predictions we nailed in the prediction video. Tour Guide to 2, I didn't expect, but happy enough about it. And we'll see whether or not those have any kind of an impact and whether or not we see them maybe go back to 1 or, you know, move the other direction and go to 3 when the next list drops, which will be no sooner than March 30th. So I fully expect a new list to kind of coincide with Master Rule 5 and, and for them to sort of test the waters with some of this stuff here. Uh, they limited Nessie as well, so Danger got a slight hit. I think overall this this was a really interesting list, and I just don't want to waste everyone's time breaking it down entirely because we've already sort of seen a bunch of people go through it, but I definitely think it's a good move for the game, and I hope we start to see some other decks sort of step up and take some some top spots. Um, you know, one of those might be Spiral, unfortunately, which is not a deck I'm very fond of, but I think you'll see that a lot of... Uh, a lot of decks that maybe were on the outskirts when you had the big three of Thunder, um, Orcus, and Sky Striker dominating, you might see some of these other decks sort of work their way back in. So basically, I think it was a good list. I'm pretty excited about it, and I'm excited to see what Master Rule 5 brings, as well as what cards from Ignition Assault really do to spice up the game. Obviously, cards like Lightning Storm, you know, we didn't see Harpy's Feather Duster come back. I think they want to push Lightning Storm, so it'll be interesting. Um, and definitely, you know, hopefully some of those cards that did come off the list do get some reprints which will play into our topic of today's video, which is five cards in the current game that could greatly benefit from a reprint, at least from the perspective of the players. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so for the purpose of this list, obviously Pot of Extravagance and Infinite Impermanence are two cards that are in dire need of reprints, both very meta-relevant cards, both very pricey, even in permanence, though it did get a reprint in dual power, is still very expensive. So I think both of those cards are pretty obvious, and, and hopefully the top two cards that Konami's looking at reprinting. I did just leave them off the list because I wanted to talk about some other cards that I think, you know, need a reprint, but maybe not as decidedly as those because they're not seeing play in every meta deck. But let's jump into it, starting with the first one, which is Medalche Magellene. Now this card is almost $40. It's fluctuated a bit here and there. Obviously, Medalshe gets, you know, random bits of hype now and again, and has always kind of been a fan-favorite archetype, so it's one of those things that, with no reprint, and taking into consideration the popularity the archetype has among fans, it's easy to understand why Magellene is still so much money. But at this point, it's been eight years. Um, it came out in Return of the Duelist in 2012, has not been reprinted since. They've had ample opportunity to do so and just have chosen not to. Magellene really needs to be, like, number one on the list of cards that need a reprint, especially with new support coming out in Eternity Code. 
Konami did tease this um, in a recent press release talking about some of the stuff for Eternity Code and reprints that are coming. So one has to think that Magellan's going to be, you know, reprinted and, and more accessible for everyone. Because I do think Mid Ulster is a fun deck and it's a fan favorite deck, but no one wants to drop, you know, between $90 and $120 on a play set of Magellan. Uh, if it's avoidable. So Magellan's my first choice for reprint, and hopefully they do take care of that in Dual Overload. Alright, number two, Harpy's Feather Duster. This is still banned, and has been for what seems like forever, but I think Harpy's Feather Duster does need a reprint. The last time it was reprinted was in 2013, it was in Legendary Collection Joey's World, um, so that's been about seven years. It's one of those cards that continues to go up in value with speculation that it's going to come back. It happens every ban list season. Seems like now the price is holding. It's about $23 on average for the foil versions on TCG Player. And that's, you know, the Legendary Collection ones. If you're talking about the Tournament Pack ones or otherwise, those are even more. So I don't know whether or not Konami has any intent to bring it back on this side like they did in the OCG. But if it does, you could easily see this price doubling, just going completely out of control. And I think it's one of those cards that they should reprint. I mean, it's a novelty card people are going to remember harpy's feather duster you don't have to put it in like a dual overload or something if they don't want people to be like oh my god it's coming back and and have you know more speculation although delinquent duo was in the kaiba collection so it's possible but maybe put it in a speed duel set or put it in one of the ots's or something just so there's a more accessible copy of harpy's feather duster in the instance that it does come back i think seven years for a card like this is probably more than enough time so let's get the reprint of harpy's feather duster sooner rather than later all right, number three on the list, uh, another pretty obvious one, that's Pato Avarice. So it's been, 2013 was the last time Avarice was printed. It was Legendary Collection Joey's World, so actually the same time as Harpy's Feather Duster. Avarice was in uh, Astral Pack 2 that same year, but the Astral Pack came out earlier in the year, whereas Joey was, you know, towards the summer, um, actually I think early fall. Avarice is one of those cards that's not super expensive. Like, there's a couple common copies that are between, like, 5 and $7, but I do think it's one of those cards that if it does start to become good, and especially if it does, you know, go from 1 to, say, 2 or 3, where it's at in the OCG right now, uh, you could easily see it start to go up. So considering the amount of time that's passed and the fact that it's just a generically solid card that most decks can play, I hope they put Avarice in Dual Overload. Uh, they could just make it an Ultra if it's an all-foil set. Uh, last time it was Ultra was in Dark Revelation 4, which was like a notoriously short print set anyway. So I think it's a pretty safe bet. Hopefully we get another copy of Avarice out there just so it's more accessible for those of us who, you know, were not fortunate enough to have Ultimate Rares just stashed away on the off chance they might come back. Alright, number four, since it'd be kind of a cop-out to say the entire Legendary Duelist Ancient Millennium set should be reprinted, um, I decided Millennium Eyes Restrict. So this is probably the best card competitively to come out of that set. It is a very expensive card right now. Last I checked, it was between $45 and $50, and I know it's fluctuated here and there. It's just a really good card that's extremely useful with Instant Fusion and gets even better with Master Rule 5. And I think it's going to be one of those cards that like a lot of decks will look to as a viable option to either counter plays or just to have another boss monster to go to in the extra deck yet you know you're not going to find legendary duel of sanctioned millennium anywhere they have shown they're willing to reprint some of those cards i mean speed duel got a couple of the cards from ancient millennium i think it was parasite paranoid and i believe there was another one as well so there is some hope i would also hope that they reprint stuff like crystal bond and other cool cards that would be nice just to have for collector's purposes but ultimately i think uh millennium eyes restrict definitely needs a reprint and if they're going to start reprinting cards from legendary duelists this was uh, 2018, it was February 2018, so it's been just about two years. I think Millennium Eyes Restrict should really be the top candidate as far as a Legendary Duelist card getting a reprint right now. And last but not least, the last one we're talking about today that needs a reprint, that's Artifact Sanctum. Now I know some of you may hear this and think, what, it's not that expensive? And it's not, the cheapest copy is around $15 right now. But Artifact Sanctum is a really good card that a lot of people are either hesitant to move or just generally isn't super easy to come by. So we last got this card in 2017, it was in Battles of Legend Light's Revenge. Since then they've reprinted Artifact Scythe multiple times, and it didn't get a secret rarity, which was unfortunate. They've also reprinted Lancia, um, and they've kind of made all of those cards accessible with the exception of Sanctum. Now you can't find Battles of Legend Light's Revenge anymore unless it's like a clearance pack at the store or something. So it's not as though you can just go out and try to pick these up willy-nilly, and on top of that it's Primal Origin, so that's an older set too. I just think Sanctum's gonna be one of those cards that's always gonna have use, and the longer, you know, it doesn't get a reprint, the more expensive it has the potential to become. I'd like to see them put it in Dual Overload, or just some type of reprint set this year, even if it's a Super and an OTS or something. It'd just be nice to actually be able to get an Artifact Sanctum and have a play set of it relatively affordable, so everyone kind of has access to that Artifact Engine, which is really good in some decks, and personally I think 
kind of a fun thing to play around with when when deck building and, and theorizing and stuff so that's it for me this is the last card so overall we got Medulce Magellene we've got uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, Pot of Avarice, Millennium Eyes Restrict and Artifact Sanctum some of you may agree or disagree with me I think these are pretty fair choices I'd like to see all of these get reprinted and obviously there's some more so let me know in the comments below what you guys think what other cards do you want to see reprinted that I might have missed um, or do you disagree with any of my choices? Maybe you don't think any of these need reprints. So definitely value the feedback. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel as always. And I'll see you next week with a brand new video.